this video. Let's see if we can um, we'll start working with some JavaScript. And to do so, we're going to build a form. It's a new HTML element that we'll put on an HTML page, and um, uh, with which we can we can collect user information. In the case that I'm going to do today, what I made up was uh, uh, we're a, we're like a produce stand or something, and uh, we're, we sell apples and oranges. So there could be some number of apples that a person would buy and some number of oranges that a person would buy. Um, the person at the register would enter the number of apples and they would enter the number of oranges. And um, our, our software will calculate the total cost uh, that the person would have to pay, the total price. So that's the idea of what we're going to do here. And so I'll start with uh, the HTML file, which would be our main our starting file. It's always our starting place with the HTML, right? And then we will include a CSS file and finally a third file, the .js file. I'm going to name them all the same, but they'll all have different file extensions. Now I'm using Notepad++, but what, I'm, what I do here should be also doable in a COT editor if you're using that one or any other editor that you might be using. It's just a simple editor. So let's see if we can get right to it here and start working with Notepad++ in my case. Let's see, what am I doing here? This. Okay. So I created this file from my template. In Notepad++, I just opened up uh, template.html that we had created in a previous uh, video. And I opened it up and then I saved it. I did, in my case, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me double check. You can see my mouse up there. Some things you can, it allows you to see this, but yeah, it does, it does. So I did file, save as, and, um, well, there it comes up, and then I gave it a name, right? And then since I have hypertext markup language, file, which is a .htl, any one of those, it's going to give me this, this extension, .html, and that's what's most important here. The name could be anything you want it to be. In my case, I called it um, forms example, right? I didn't even call it .html, right? That just happened because I chose for the, the file type to be a .html type, okay? I'm going to cancel since I already created the file. All right, so that got me. This got me by base. All right, so when I from my template, every all this was in my template except um, I had some generic title which I've changed now to forms.example because that's what I want my name of this particular program to be. Uh, but this stuff was all in my template, and I'm sure it's in yours. I'm looking for something that wasn't. Oh, I did have these two lines of code in my template. Because I know I'm gonna with every every time I create an HTML file, I'm highly probable that I'm gonna want a style sheet associated with it and a JavaScript page associated with it. I don't want to write styles in the head, and I don't want to write JavaScript in the head. I want them to be in their own separate files. So I'm using these two lines of code here. This one, as we've done in the past, to bring my styles from the separate. Um, page that I created, the .css, uh, into, the C into the HTML, and so I used this one, this particular line of code here, to bring uh, my JavaScript in, right? So the only thing that's different, this is all in my own template, what's different about this is I don't know for sure with any given website what I'm going to call the file, but it will always be .css some name.css same with the javascript some name.js right so my template contains all this stuff and once i create this new html file all i have to do is change f o r m s e x a m p l e to whatever i want it to be and in this case whatever i i named them now i was consistent with my naming here in that i named if you can you can see it up here I named my 
when I copied that template, right, when I did save as, it asked me to name it, I called it forms example .html. So right there, I decided, you know what, I'm going to call all of three of these files forms.example, and I'm going to be consistent about, consistent about it, so that whenever I'm referring to any of these files, I'm using the same name. I don't have to go back and try to figure out what did I call that. It's always the same in all three files. So what makes them different, the files, is the extension, .html or the .css. See, it's just a blank CSS. I just created a new file that was a CSS extension. And the JavaScript, also a blank file, nothing in it. Uh, also called forms example, but it's .js. So I know by the extension that these are th three separate, three different files, right? And so all I had to do then to bring those other two files into this one, this is my main HTML file, is use these two lines right here. Boom, boom. And make sure that I keep the name the same. So you see why I like to keep the name the same? All I, have, I can copy this and paste it right there too. Is this the same? I can write it once, forms example, double click it probably, yeah, copy and paste it right there. Because I've chosen to, to have all the, the files called the same. Well, all, they all have the same name. It's the extension that differs between them. All right, okay, so enough on that. So all this, now all I have to do every time I open up this template is that. I have to change the title, I have to change the name of the CSS file, and I have to change the name of the JS file. So these are the only three things that ever have to be modified from the base template. All right, as far as you know, stuff that's in the header. Now the body is naturally going to be different for every uh, website because every website wants to be unique. Uh, it's these things that I have in the template that are not unique. These are, are necessary in all uh, in all websites. So I, I keep a copy of those. I don't want to type this every single time. So I'm keeping that in a template. All right. Um, so then let's see. Uh, what we want to do then is begin filling out the head, the body, I mean, the body. And I'm going to start by, by putting a form in here. And so a form is form. And then, of course, as usual, I'm going to close the form. So the form is the child of the body, right? Uh oh, did I spell that right? And I put the opening tag and the closing tag. I want to fill the form in with form elements. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of form elements, a bunch of different form elements. Let me see if I can um, should we save this. Notice how this is not, it's red, right? In Notepad++, this is red when it's not been saved. The tab. So I'm going to save it real quick with the Control S. And now I'm just making sure that if something happens to this computer that I set up, uh, that I don't lose what I'm doing. So I'm trying to make sure everything keeps being saved all the time. So let me see if I can show you some a list. We're only going to use text elements here in this, but I want to show you the existence of these uh, form elements. So let me uh, change you to a, a, a web browser. So, I can so over to W3 Schools, and uh, I just did a search on HTML form elements. So I can show you the elements that will be children of the form, right? So kind of like list elements are children of the unordered list or the ordered list. So these are things that would be inside of a form. So there's an input box, there's a label, um, a select text area. So that, yeah, this is a larger text area. There are buttons, there's, all, there's check boxes, there's all kinds of things here. This is a lot of different possibilities. We're only going to work with, uh, I think, input is what we're going to, or text. I can't remember which one I'm, I'm working with here. But it doesn't matter. I mean, and, and here on, on uh, W3 Schools, they, they go through a whole bunch of them, right? So you can, what's ex interesting about this is the select, this is drop-down list, I think. We can choose this, and we can then 
see that, yeah, drop down. So this is how you would create the drop down list of something that you wanted to select. All right, and here's the code. We've got the form. Don't worry too much about the details of this right now. But you can see the open and close of the form. And then we're going to have, there's label, which we're going to use as well. And um, there we have our select. Our select element right there. And then these would be the options that, are, that we run through on the selection. So this one's a little more complicated than what we're going to use. But I just wanted to show you that there's a lots of them. Right? There, there, uh, well, not lots, but a number of them. So that's something you might look into if you venture down this path. For us, we're going to stick with just a plain text box. Right? So let's get rid of this and jump back. All right, back to our JavaScript. So you know what? I, I started this form, but I definitely want to get something else on this page because right? it's going to be a little plain. So I'll just do this. All right, I'll give it a header. Right? So there's some kind of heading on this page uh, over top of this form that we're going to create. So you won't have to sit around watching me type. So that that's a header, right? That has nothing to do with our form. I mean, it's going to list, it's going to show itself over top of the form, right? Because it comes above it. So I'm just giving them some space just so it looks better for you. Now it should be indented, right? Because this is something that is a child of the form. It belongs to the form. And so I've, I've added two elements here. The first one, a label, and the second one, an input text, input type text. This is a, a label, uh, and it's a label for something that has the ID of name oranges. Right? That's the first line here, this one. Don't worry too much about the details of this either. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say here actually with this label is the label, forget about the four equals part, the label is going to be number of oranges. Right? And then that's the close of the label. And then I just gave it a break at the end. So there will be a line to return there. Right? So the only thing that's on question here is what is this for equals? Right? Well, that is associating this label with the input that has the ID num oranges right here. Right? So it's a way to get this label to be associated with this particular text box. So the type equals is the attribute that type equals would be type equals text in our case, as I have written. But if you wanted to use the selection box, then it would be type equals select, or type equals checkbox, or whatever the type is of the, the input box that you're, you're putting in here. All right, so the form, I labeled my first input box, which is just the text box, right? So you just type in this box. I've given it an ID of num oranges. That ID is being used in the label, so the lab label can identify what element it's trying to label, right? And I've set an initial value here in this box of zero. So value equals zero is something you could do, right? Now the fact that this is in quotes here brings up, uh, recall, something I would like to bring up. Everything on your web page is plain text. So what that means, here, let's move this. What that means is, um, is this. If you have a, a plain text three, like the character three, and you put next to that plus, and then a, a plain text character two, are we trying to say, Put 3 and 2 together for 32. So you have the number 32. Put the character 3 combined with the character 2 in sequence so that we have the, the, the new number, the character number, as 32. Uh, or are you trying to say we want to do mathematics here and, and, and wind up with a result, a summation of 3 plus 2 is 5? So the plus sign can work in, in both ways. Right, it can concatenate text strings together. So a three, if it's a, if a three is a character or 
a string, it can concatenate it with another character or string. So we have to be careful uh, when we're dealing with numbers um, as far as what the type of that number is. Is that just a character or is it a number? So let's think of number as a type and character as a type. So we typically specify characters by putting quote marks around them or tick marks. And that's like a character or a string of characters that are combined together. So in that case, the, if we're dealing with strings, then the plus sign will signify concatenation, which means it's just going to tack one string onto the end of the next string onto the next uh, each time you put a plus. If you have two characters that are of type number, <laughs> so a three that's type number and a two that's type number, then the plus sign is going to do arithmetic to it. It's going to cause a five to come out. It's all relative to what it is you're trying to accomplish. So the plus sign works in two ways. It either concatenates strings slash characters or it conducts arithmetic executes arithmetic instructions, right? So we want to keep that in mind when you're thinking through this. So let's jump back over here to this thing real quick, if I can find it here. Notepad++, plus plus, there it is. And so what I have here when I put a zero in here, the only way I can, I can't specify anything. Now this is, I'm not really specifying that this is a string here either. It's just that the, the fact that the quotes marks were around it, and it, I was dealing with an HTML page, uh, caused me to remember that I, I better make this distinction for you uh, uh, about whether or not we're dealing with a character. So this implies that it's a character, right? Because it has quotes around it. It's a character zero, not the number zero. Everything on your HTML page should be thought of as a character. Okay, so that's all I want to say right now with that. I'll bring this up again as we get into the Java code. But right for right now, that zero that I have placed there that's going to be visible when we view the page is a character zero, not a number zero. Right? And then on change, so whenever something in this box changes, so on, on, on a change in this box, I'm, I want the browser to execute a JavaScript function here, right? I, I don't need to specify it as a JavaScript function. What does that is the open and close parentheses. And also the fact that way up in the head, I kind of imported my JavaScript. So I'm going to have to create a JavaScript function called calc. <laughs> in other words, uh, because I'm saying to the browser, when something changes in this text box, what happened by the user doing it, right? Then you should call a JavaScript function called, that has the name calc. Calculate. Currently, we know that my JavaScript has nothing in it. So this is going to cause an error. But I'm going to need to make one called calc in here, right? Because I'm already, I'm already telling the browser to use it. CSS, which also is empty at the moment. Okay, so that's that's the first one of these. Um, we can take a look at this. You know what? I should do some little CSS too on this, so that things. So let's take a look at it. All right. Remember, it's red here, so I'm going to have to save before I try to run launch in. I want to do Chrome. Okay, so pretty ugly looking page, but it, it did do what I wanted, right? You, you see the, the text box there. I hope you see that. Let's see. Um, can't tell what you're You're looking at Notepad still. So let's switch back over to. Oh, this always takes a minute, doesn't it? I always have so many windows open that. Of that. Let's do this. There's the browser. <laughs> All right. I hit file run. I'm, I did run Chrome in Notepad. Chrome popped open, and this is uh, the page that we're viewing. This is the page that we just built. 
So there isn't any style to this, right? Because there's, because there's no CSS. I didn't do any CSS yet. <coughs> I don't have an error message because I haven't actually tried to change anything in this box. I'm not going to get an error message. It's just not going to work. Well, you see what the label did. It put that label over top the text box for that we want to put number of uh, oranges that we're going to purchase in. And it did initialize the value with zero. Right? So I can change that and put another number in there. Right? Now it changed. It attempted, the, the browser did attempt to call calc, but calc doesn't exist. So if we looked at error messages, and we're not going to get into how to do that, then we would see there was an error message right there. Because we don't have that. We don't, we don't have a JavaScript function yet called calc. But you can see from the HTML side of things how uh, they're interacting. I don't like the way I have this set up right now. That's not working. Well, it, it just is what it is. So let's keep going. So you can see how the this code, the HTML code, is working out, and what we really have here. Let's make sure I've got this. It's just not. You know, guys, I'm sorry. I had to reset up this whole computer, this new computer, and it's just not the same. And so now everything's kind of confusing. I don't have anything set up the same. It's all clunchy now, but I think we'll get through it. So here's where the HTML interacts, the HTML file interacts with the JavaScript file. It's that one place right there. I know we brought the, the, the JavaScript in right here on this script line. This is how, where the, the browser became aware of the fact that we have JavaScript functions even though we don't yet, but we're telling it we do. Um, and so now we're calling a JavaScript function. We're, we're asking the browser, when something changes in this box, I want you to look in that file that I, that I imported under the script element and find a function call in there called calc and execute that code for me. Right, and have that, that code execute. So that's just how the browser kind of bootstraps the JavaScript to get it executed. It's this event. Something changes, then the browser calls this function, knocks on the function's door. All right, so let's see if we can. We're going to do this again. I'm going to pause this thing for a second while I get straight. Real quick, let's. Um, I want to throw in some. This is the CSS file, forms example dot CSS, and I just put two lines in there, body and form. I'm just changing the background color just because I'm tired of looking at that ugly. I don't, you know, it's just ugly. <laughs> so we just put that in there, and um, we'll we'll see what that looks like in a minute. But I wanted to let you know before I come back on, and suddenly it's like you're like, well, what are these green and orange colors floating around? So that I just added those two rules to the CSS. Okay, so now I'm in forms, forms example dot js, and uh, I, I want to that 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 function that the the browser is going to call called it has the name calc. We, we need to get it defined in here so that the browser has something to call. Right Right now we didn't have anything in there. <coughs> so I just added this. Right, This is how I would define a function. You use the keyword function, and then the name of the function. And then we don't have any parameters on this function. It's pretty straightforward. It would have just an open and close paren. Right? And then just as we do with the CSS rules, we start the body of this function with uh, an open curly bracket. And then we close the body with a closed curly bracket. And then we give it some space in here. Right inside of here is where we're going to start writing out the function. Okay, so 
so so the first thing I'm going to do is um, define a couple of uh, constants. So constants, here, let's get them in there so you can see what they look like. Constants are kind of like, well, they're storage boxes. There's another storage box called a variable, right? So there's two kinds of storage boxes, constants and variables. We use the const, C-O-N-S-T, storage box when we want to store a value that's not going to be changed, right? We don't want it, it's constant. We use the variable or var kind of box when we may be modifying or changing that value. So in this case, what I, I want to have a storage box named, uh, yeah, that's from that word was getting <coughs> price orange <coughs> or orange. So the name of this box is price orange in uppercase letters. It's convention to use uppercase letters with consts, with constant variables, so that when we're in the code reading it, we can we can identify that these are constants. And I assign a price to it. So an assignment, like an equal sign, they work right to left. So this value goes from the right hand side into the left hand container. I can't swap that around because otherwise I'd be trying to change what it means to be 1.25 numerically. So if I have 1.25 equals price orange instead of the way I have it, then I'd be trying to, remember it's right to left, so then I'd be trying to put whatever's in the content, whatever the contents are of price change into 1.25 which doesn't make any sense, right? Because the 1.25 is not a name. It's, uh, it means something. You can't change the underlying meaning of a, of a number. All right, so we just want to do them right to left. Always keep in mind that it's right to left. Put the box on the left and the value you want to put in the box on the right. So we're up saying that, um, app, what are these, oranges? Oranges are $1.25 and apples are $1.35. That's the price of them. That doesn't change. I'm not going to modify somewhere in the code, change that to something. And I don't even want that to be able to happen, that I could accidentally modify or change the price of an apple or the price of an orange. So I want to use these as constants because I, they're immutable then. They can't be changed. All right, so I've got those two constants. I'm going to need those in order to calculate how much it costs, right? In order to calculate how much the apples cost, I need to know how much an apple costs and how many apples. I need two things. How many are you going to buy, and how much are how much is each one? All right. So the how much is each one is not variable, but how many you're going to buy is. You could buy four. You could buy eight. Regardless of how many you buy, they're all a dollar twenty-five. All right. So let's see if we can grab a couple more. All right. So now I'm going to. There's our constants are in. Now I want to create some variables here in the JavaScript um, and into those variables I want to run over to the HTML page from the JavaScript while everything is executing, I mean not me physically, but I want the JavaScript to reach over to the HTML page and grab a number out of that one of those boxes, right? So here in JavaScript page, right, the JS page, I've created a variable called numOranges. This container, numOranges, is mutable and it lives in the JavaScript. Right? If we jump back to the HTML, oh, I, yeah, you, we'll see that in a minute when, I, when we redo this. For the numOranges here, numOranges, numOranges is an identifier. The ID, right? That name is the same as the one I used. It doesn't have to be the same. It's just that it makes sense for it to be the same. It wouldn't be massively confusing if I asked someone to put a number in here indicating how many oranges they wanted to purchase and I called the ID or, or anything else number of pimentos. It just
just simply would make no sense. When you purchase something in a restaurant and you get the bill, you expect the bill to come back if you bought two hamburgers and it comes back to you saying two chicken sandwiches. You're going to say, what the hell? And they're going to say, oh no, we call our burgers chicken sandwiches here. <laughs> right? The reason I'm saying numb oranges is because I'm trying to ask someone how many, what are the number of oranges that you have? So I ask them using that language, number of oranges, because it makes sense to do so. Not because HTML or JavaScript require that I do it. it it's required by common conventional English language that I call something by the name by which it's known. I call a cat a cat, a dog a dog, an orange an orange, an apple an apple, because that's the way we define them here in the US. Right? So, but this name, no one requires that I call it this. Right? I've given it the ID num oranges because I want to be able to say, hey, go to that element that I've called num oranges, and why did I call it num oranges? Because there's a number in there that indicates the number of oranges, right? It just all makes sense to use the same word again. Now, if I go to the JavaScript, oh, uh, that's the CSS again. Go to the JavaScript here. I'm going to create a variable. This has nothing to do with the ID. But if I'm going to get a variable, then it's going to ultimately, at some point or other, go to the HTML document and grab a number out of a box that represents the number of oranges, then wouldn't it make sense to have this box called num oranges as well? You could have a bin of flour at your house. Doesn't it make sense that I would also label my bin of flour, flour, and you have yours named flour? It doesn't mean it's the same flour. I have my own flour. You have your own flour. It so happens that those containers, we've called them the same name because, miraculously enough, we both put flour in the container called flour. We don't call it X because it doesn't make sense, right? Where do you keep the flour? In the container called X. How about where do you keep the apples in the container called Y? It doesn't make sense. I, I call the container a name that represents the contents of the container, just like in conventional human everyday life. There is nothing different. Right? It doesn't make sense to mix these things. So I've created a new box here. I've used the same word because I really know that I'm going to go over to the num oranges element, has the ID num oranges, and I'm going to grab that number and put it in here, and I'm really, in some sense, I'm indicating that that's the num oranges that I got from the HTML page, right? And here's where I'm going to do that, right here. We're going to go to the HTML document, right, and I try to get some element on that, some HTML element, by its ID, and what's the ID I'm going to be looking for? If I'm looking to get a value that represents the number of elements that the person bought, and I've identified that box as number of elements, then I want to say the box ID I want to use is number of our num oranges. I don't want to get the number from the box called num apples because that would be the number of apples and we're trying to store the number of oranges. Okay? It is really super super straight forward. It's the same way it would work in human 
Like, I wouldn't go to your house to get a cup of flour and bring it back and put it in the container called sugar at my house. I mean, I could. There's nothing saying I can't call the container that I put flour in sugar. I could do that. The police aren't going to come get me. I, I, nothing's going to happen to me. But it's going to confuse the living hell out of anybody looking to get sugar. They're going to put flour in their coffee. <laughs> so I'm doing it because it has meaning and it helps me remember things too. Now if I do that, I've got to remember there isn't sugar in the flour container. Wait a minute. There isn't sugar in the sugar container. There's flour in the sugar container and salt in the flour container and pepper in the oregano container. You see, it makes no sense for me to call something some other name. I should call it with a name that represents what what's in that container. <laughs> so now we know the number of oranges is going to be in a container called, lo and behold, number of oranges. Number of apples will be in a container called number of apples. Right? And we're going to get that number. Here's the assignment. It goes right to left, right? So whatever this turns into, 6, 5, 20, it's going to get put into, because assignment, equal sign, that number goes right to left. It's going to go into this box in the JavaScript. So something's going to come from the HTML on this side and be put into the JavaScript on this side. And I'm getting the thing from the HTML that's identified as num apples here, and I'm putting it into something identified as num apples here. So that I'm putting apples with apples. And not trying to put apples with oranges or anything else. Right? I'm keeping them together. So go into the HTML document find that element that has the ID num apples. That's the box on the HTML page that's identified as num apples and get that value out of there. All right, so if that's a three, a six, an eight, or five, whatever, but remember that comes off as a string or character, right? So then I have to change it into a number and that's what we do here. By putting that word number with a capital N in front and it's parens too, don't forget the parens when you're doing it. I'm changing the character three into the number three. And then I take that number and I put it into the box called num apples in the JavaScript. So I got a three from the HTML and I put it into a box called num apples in the JavaScript. That's it at the end. So I did that for both oranges and apples. So now, I think I have all the pieces I need to be able to calculate how much somebody owes me, right, in our produce stand here. Uh, I know how much an apple, an orange costs, and an apple, both. If I know the cost of an orange, how much the price is, and I know how many oranges the person's buying, then I can multiply num oranges by the price of an orange, and that would be my total. This would happen in the same way it would occur if you went to McDonald's and bought two hamburgers. McDonald's specifies a price for a hamburger. You say, I want two of them. They say, how, how much is that going to cost? You immediately calculate it, right? That wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> uh, let me bring it up because some people, I mean, it's, it's because something looks different here, and, and you know, everybody kind of shuts down when something looks different. But it's the same as anything that you do in life currently and have been doing since a very early age. If I knew the price of a pencil and how many pencils I was going to buy, I didn't know how much that's going to cost me. It's not any, there's nothing any different than that. And so how would I do that? Let me create some variables to store those values in after I calculate them. Let me just get this straight here so it looks good. All right. So I've created a number, a 
another box here, and I call it the I call it price oranges. I put an S on this one. Okay, so that's going to be the price of more than one orange, right? The first one is called price orange, and it's in uppercase. So that's the price of a single orange. This is the price of a quantity of oranges, right? So uh, the total price, if I bought five oranges, it should be, I need to know the number five, that number should be in num oranges, right? That would be five. I bought five. I want five oranges times the price of the oranges, $1.25. So num oranges times price oranges. Just use an asterisk between them. So I'm multiplying the price times the number. And then that should tell me how much the oranges cost me. Um, so if I had four of them, let's say that'd be four five dollars, right? This should be five dollars. The price oranges should have a five in it now because this gets evaluated. We multiply those two numbers, the contents of those two variables together, and place the results into this box. Then I did the same thing for apples. Say, okay, well, how much is an apple and how many did you get? Multiply those two numbers together and put the result there. Now for my total then, I know how much the apples cost me, I know how much the oranges cost me. My total price should be the sum of those two, right? So I've got the price of the apples plus the, the price, uh, I, I said it backwards, it's it. price of the oranges plus the price of the apples. It doesn't matter which way they go, right? It does matter that I don't attempt to, to calculate the total price before I know the price of the oranges. If I don't know how much the oranges cost, then how could I possibly calculate the total price? I would need to know that first, right? So I have to do that calculation first. So I have to perform it. So I did. I calculated the price of the oranges and, and then the price of the apples. It wouldn't have mattered which one of those I did first. It's just two separate numbers that I need the answer to to both of them. But this one, it is essential that I wait until I know this number and this number because I can't possibly calculate the grand total without knowing the individual parts that make up the total. Okay, So now we know that what the grand total is that we want to print in the box. So then we just need one more line of code because we need to take, now we have this 5 in our JavaScript here we need to place it onto the HTML page. It's in the JavaScript page at the moment. We need to place it into the uh, HTML. So let's, I'm going to make a plain space there so it's uh, nice and open. Hopefully you can read that. Remember the equal sign goes right to left. On the left hand side, I've got that whole document dot get element by ID stuff, right? So I've identified this element, this box over there, called total. We'll take a look at that again as well. That box over there has the ID of total. Its value, to its value, I want to assign, because I assign right, this stuff gets assigned to this. It gets assigned to the value portion of this box called total, right, the ID total of the element that's in the HTML document. Okay, price total is our what well, we calculated the total. Now that should so that should put it back onto the HTML page. So um, right, so what, what you would want to notice here is the difference between when we pulled from the HTML to the JavaScript. We put the HTML stuff on the right hand side, right? So we were getting this number, always right to left, assigned to this variable. The contents of this variable, price total, added to a string called dollar signs. I want this to start off with a dollar sign when it gets over there. Assign that to this box. So place this stuff in this box. Right? Just like this one's doing the same thing. 
get this stuff in this box. This stuff, where is it? Here. In this box. Right to left. Okay? Let's, uh, I bet you this is right, yeah, of course. Let's save this. There's the, the CSS that I did. You're going to see it in a moment here because we're going to do a little test on this. That, that's all I did was I made the bot, the whole background should be orange of the whole page, and then the background of the form should be green. Right, the form element. That's all I did, just to get some color on there. Let's look here. So we don't have everything here. So I'm going to add some more lines here. So what we do have, though, is this is the input box right here, right? Input type text box. This is just a label for it. So don't get confused by that. We're not identifying. It has no ID or anything. It's just a label. I could have done this differently. I could have just read the text there, right? But somehow this makes it a little more official <laughs> to give the text a, a say. Well, this is a special text that is the label for the num changes element. All right, so, but here's the num changes element. It, the num oranges element. It has the ID num oranges. All right. So we're going to need one for apples, and then we're going to need the total, the one for total that we're going to write to from the JavaScript. So let's quick put those in there and see if we can not get this thing. I know it's. All right. So then let's pop this one in underneath of here. Well, would you like to see what it looks like real quick? Actually, we did see this form um, at one point. We just didn't see the colors. This is what we had before. I just remember I, I made the background orange and then the background of the form green. So that's the label right there. So it would have worked just fine just to type it in as plain text, but I, I kind of made it official by calling it a label, I gave it a name. And this is the text box, right? And it has that number that uh, we initialized it with. And um, so let me uh, continue on, we'll add some more. We need to add a couple more now, right? We need to add, what we have there right now is number of what, oranges? We need another, another box for number of apples, and then another box to put the, the total price in. So I'm just going to add those. Another set that's just, I'm just going to copy paste this one and then change apples to oranges or, or whatever it is to, to the other one. It's the same thing over, and then the, the final one is a little bit slightly different, but not much. So let's uh, go over there. Okay, so what we have is the num oranges one is what we have. So let's, uh, here, I'll do this just so this, it doesn't have to be that way. So there's the num apples. Let me straighten this up. Okay, so it's the same as the num oranges. Right? Did the same exact thing as the one above it. And in fact, I just copied it and pasted it. And then guess what? For the last one, I pasted it again. So I'm just, I'm doing the same thing three times. I'm going to modify some of the labels or some of the text. So instead of saying I'm asking for the number of oranges here, I'm going to be asking for the number of apples this time. All right. So the label has to do with the number of apples. All right. So I put the plain text in here that's going to show up on the, on the document. Uh, but I'm associated, I know that I'm going to use for this, this input text box, I'm going to give it an ID of, I mean, what, what I make it? Num pizzas? Uh, of course. Uh, I'm asking someone to put the number of apples in here. So I'm going to use a word that relates to number of apples. So I already know this. Alright, so I'll, I'll I'm going to use an ID called dumb apples. All right, I'm going to ask the person put the number of apples in here. And I'm going to say here, I kind of knew what I was going to do before I even wrote this one, this line. Right, so label is four. And I, 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 for a moment, I looked up in the air and I thought, I wonder what ID I'm going to give this label. 
And then, you know, some things went through my head. How about number of rutabagas? Mm, that sounds so good. Leeks, number of leeks? No. Um, well, I think maybe numb apples. Since I'm asking for the numb apples, I think I'll use that. And that's how I came up with this. This ID. It's not anything having to do with protocols or codes or anything else. It's just me choosing a name that makes sense. And so it made enough sense that I wrote it here before I even wrote ID equals. Because I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call this num apples. Because I'm asking for the number of apples. I hate to belabor this. <laughs> I really do. But I know that I've, uh, there have been issues with this. I will watch you name it that way. Or people will say X, Y, Z, um, L, M. <laughs> say, well, what's in Z? Apples, oranges, rutabagas, what? Why don't you just call it apples? Then I know what's in there. It's the same as if you have a spice rack at home. 15 spices in there. And you name them Spice A, Spice B, Spice C, Spice D. And then somebody comes over to, to, to grab the oregano. <laughs> All right. Which one is oregano? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying no maps because it makes sense. That's all. I chose this. I could choose anything I want. All right, so then I, we had the orange one already. I copied it, I pasted it, I changed it to numb apples. From numb oranges to numb apples because I'm, thinking, I'm getting something different. I changed this word orange to the word apple. Okay. Um, in both cases, I want the value to store off at zero because they haven't bought any yet. Right. And the type of ele uh, input element this is, is a text box. It's just a plain old text. That's where you get the box that you can type in. All right, now finally, into another text box, I want to put the results. So these are, we're collecting these two from users. In both cases, we're going to call calc. So if you change the number inside this box from a 0 to a 4, calc's going to get called. That we just wrote in JavaScript. That if you change this number to a 4 or an 8 or a 12, whatever, calc's going to get called. And it stands for calculate. So maybe there could be a better word for that, right? I mean that word up. Because <laughs> I thought calculate sounded good, but maybe um, calc bill would be better. But I wouldn't just call it X, and nor would I call it rutabagas. Right? I would try to choose a word that was appropriate for what action I was trying to achieve here with this. All right, so I chose cow, for better or for worse. Um, that's in those two. But I don't need to call calc with this last one, in which I want to, the total to be placed. Right, so I'm calling this the grand. Called the grand total, maybe, or something, but although I rarely do you ever get a receipt from a restaurant that says grand total, I usually just say total. Sometimes subtotal, which would be before tax, but totals usually means, the, um, well, total. Total means total. <laughs> so we're going to use total because conventionally that's what we're using. Um, and I knew the ID was going to be total. So it's for the element that has the ID total, which is this one, right? That first line here is just the label. It's nothing more than the label. It's a fantasy way I could have just written total. It skipped the whole open label, close label, four equals total. I didn't need any of this. I could have just put this. Just that alone. And you know in HTML that that will just print on the screen. But I fancied it up a little bit. I gave it a name. I made it official. This is officially a label. It's not just a word sitting out there with no kind of designation. It's now officially called a label. So I, I gave it a I raised its rank. It got a it got a, an increase in salary too because now it's official. Uh, input type. This is the box I want to place. 
So I don't need to call calc from here, right? In fact, it's going the other way. Here, calc is just going to place what it wants into what it wants to into this box, whatever text it wants. So this box has an ID of total. It's, it's ID, so I'll identify this text input box by asking for or, or speaking to, referring to the element with the ID total. Right? And I've disabled the box, and what this does is it, it this isn't really a box where we want people typing things into. I just wanted, I needed a place to, to drop the answer into. So I, I just used the box, but I, I don't want people typing in there. Right? It's just, it's just for reading. It's a monitor, not a, not anything else. So you'll see what happens when we do that, when I do that. So let, let, let's just look at that line of code again. This is like a receiver. Right? This is going to receive things from the JavaScript. That's this one. I hope you're seeing all this. Yeah, okay. This is where I dropped it in. Right, That was that last thing we talked about. I placed into the, the, the element that has the ID total, there's a... Uh, There's something called the value, and that's like the contents. You know, like in the HTML, we did too. We said the value equals. Am I too far back? And that's it. Value equals. So value is, is is a characteristic of of all of these text boxes and, and select everything. All these elements, they have a value. It's it's whatever. I almost said number, but this is a character, right? It's that value that's sitting in there. So this one, I did not set the value. I could, but I didn't. I probably should to zero, so it looks like there's, rather than just a blank box, it actually reads zero. All right, and then, so what we're going to do is in the, H in the uh, JavaScript, we, we assign this, all this stuff, to that value portion of the element that has the ID total that's on the HTML document. Okay? So I think we've seen them. Let's make sure. Boom. They're saved, saved. That one's not saved. So let's save it and let's roll the dice to see what we've got. I guess I could just do this. And oh, I gotta get you guys before I do it. Um, there we go. And then you gotta switch over to the browser. There you go. So that's what I was showing you just a moment ago. So I'm gonna refresh the page now. Do a control refresh to make sure we get everything. Okay, so there's our oranges text box, our apples text box. They're both initialized to zero, right? Because value equals zero in the HTML. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and here's the third box, the one that I want to receive the answer in. Right? And it's not clickable. This, see I can click on this, and I can change those values, which we're going to do. So let's get two oranges. change so it didn't call when I clicked it. it it called when I clicked away from it watch we'll get three of those <coughs> excuse me <coughs> when I click away from it keep an eye on here on the total now you see the total got changed now that's a little funky we don't usually think of dollars with that many decimal points in them so that's something that we can uh, we can clean up in our code as we go, but we, we would just want to make sure that this is about, this is calculated pretty, pretty correctly. 
interesting that that one is all the way out in the end, but we, we would make a precision of two decimal places, right? That's you know, the most you could have is 99 cents. And in fact, we, this shouldn't even be. No, it is. We're using floating point numbers. Yeah, you know, we have 20. Uh, our, our prices are, of apples are in dollars and cents. So we would need decimals for sure. So that's the idea here. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Let me let me do a quick peek through this. I know this was a long video, but it is the last one. Unless somebody wants something more, another video, or there's some other way to expand on what we're doing here. But uh, that's what we're trying. What am I doing? Stuff. I hate that everything has changed. It's all different on me, and um, so I, it's hard to keep this. Straight. And all I'm trying to do is this. All right, the easiest thing. interaction between JavaScript and HTML. The JavaScript can run over and grab things off of the HTML page. It can also put things on the HTML page. Right? The HTML side of things, it can initiate um, the JavaScript execution by calling that function. So we need a, we need a function in the JavaScript file that has uh, some name Calc is the name I, I chose. I could have called it, called it Johnny Fresh if I wanted. But then in the HTML, I would have had to say on, uh, on change, that was the event, right? On change um, equals Johnny Fresh in parentheses. So we'll call the function called Johnny Fresh. Now we don't want spaces in there. No spaces. Call it whatever you want. Try to be reasonable, <laughs> it is, what, what happens is as you're writing the code, it starts to make sense, right? It, it can read like English if you have it written like that, uh, with num oranges, num apples, rather than x and y or something like that. Uh, that's non, that's really rather generic, right? So it kind of makes sense from an English standpoint to say total of price of apples is equal to the price of an apple times the number of apples. That, that's, so I'm writing the, the equation in the same way we would speak it. Rather than trying to get super like algebraic, which it is algebra, but we don't typically use those kind of variables in algebra or in math. All right, let's, let's uh, you, you look through this and see. I don't think it's that difficult, but you'll let me know, I'm sure, tomorrow. and. Uh, so make up uh, whatever kind of page you want. I just created a new page there, right? Off the template. It doesn't need to be a part of any. It can be. You can add the form element on any page you want. I just created a new one. I didn't want it to be all cluttered with a whole bunch of other stuff. So just make sure you have all three pages together, right? You keep them all together in the same, the same directory. The, the .html, the .css, and the .js. Keep them all together. Uh, that's all I've got for you, I think, for right now. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll see tomorrow what's, what's happening and where you are.